Looking at um, the exciting work around Impact Florida with the five conditions, it really fits in um, that we were able to highlight data for continuous improvement because by looking at the data, we're able to support those other important conditions of teaching and learning. Our district has always had a strong focus on student achievement, but through the use of the data and really meaningful and strategic use of data, we've been able to really focus on every individual student. And that's been really key. We want to just not achieve in the aggregate, but to really be able to get to the granular level and ensure that all students are making progress and really establishing a pathway. We want every student upon graduation to have a clear pathway of where they're going, whether that's college, university, into the workplace, technical school. And through use of data, we're able to support students in that. We're also able to support teachers in their work to be nimble and adjust instruction based on the data. I think that we've always used data, but we didn't use it efficiently. I think we've learned new ways to analyze the data and um, give our teachers the ability to interpret that data and utilize it in their classrooms. Whereas before we were just saying, here are the numbers, here are the numbers. But if you're just getting numbers and not doing anything with those numbers, then what does that mean? So this morning, the Impact Florida group was able to see our data dialogues. So data dialogues is a system that we have in place that we do three times a year. The principals come with their team, their assistant principals, and some bring others, but they bring at least their assistant principal for curriculum. They've become so good since 2011 when we started this. We refer to our administrators as educational surgeons. Just like a surgeon can get right to it, so can our administrators. They can get right to where is the problem. We're not here to have you brag about where you're at. Tell us where the problem is, how can we help fix it, and how are you fixing it? Related to the decrease in the students with um, failing two or more classes, what do you attribute that to? Is that related to academic vital statistics, mm -hmm. or do you have something else that that we can share with your middle school colleagues tomorrow? I think it's a barrage of issues. It starts with vital statistics. There's more of an awareness of it. It's not only is it tracking uh, grade level uh, appropriate assignments, it's also tracking uh, whether what is being taught is rigorous enough. So, and also how do we engage our students? So if we don't have a lot of those components, especially in the delivery of instruction, then our students are not producing what we would like for them to do in order to be successful. Um, another aspect of the data dialogue is when we're hearing other schools offer suggestion, we're also learning from each other. So for example, if another uh, high school has a different approach that maybe I can emulate and see how that works in my school, then I'm able to hear that. So typically uh, what we did at Golden Gate High School is we called every single parent. And what we noticed, upwards of 40% of those parents didn't even realize that they, the PSAT was happening. It could not have been otherwise without that data dialogue piece, because I would not have that opportunity to hear what my other colleagues are doing in their school and what's working, what's not working. So it's really, it's more of we're sharing our data, we're sharing our best practices, and we're really helping each other so that our students are successful as a whole. We were lucky enough, we dug through the data district-wide, and with the help of Ryan, we identified how well Naples High School did and the growth that they showed. So we've actually um, reached out to those teachers that kind of were responsible for putting those strategies in place. They've been communicating with our science coach and our teachers. And it's not just the moments when you sit in front of the superintendent and members of the cabinet. It's really the two weeks leading up to this moment today of all the prep work on all those pages of the protocol because that's the true value of data dialogue. It's all of that, knowing what are those changes that they're making. The reporting out for the 10 minutes isn't really it, but it does, it's what we say, it's how to create an edge and not push them over the edge. We have shown continuous improvement as a district in terms of student achievement data. So we know that really the systemic use of data is part of that success. 
if you look at high school, you can see the graduation rates have improved. You can see proficiency rates have improved with English, with math, with various maths at high school, um, math at middle school, eighth grade science scores have improved, civics proficiency rates have improved as a district. Um, our focus on SEL, which is now another component of data dialogue, uh, has increased attendance rates, at least in Immokalee Middle, we've, we're beating the district average at all three grade levels for attendance. Focus on staff SEO, our, our staff attendance is better than the district average or in years past, it hasn't even been close to it. Uh, and I contribute part of that to the going back to the course failures. Our students are passing their courses because they're taking ownership of it. They believe in themselves now, which is something in our community students struggled with. I think people can throw that word data around all the time. Oh, we have this data. We're data rich in the world nowadays. So are we with test score data and everything else. But it's what instructional changes do you make because of that data? So instructional changes, staff changes, where's your greatest need? Where is the district see their greatest need? If we keep hearing we can't find math, can't find, then we need to do an even better job in training the math teachers that we do have. Whatever that is, because the data can show us these points. Don't be afraid of data. A data is a track. A data is what tells you where to look and how to act. Uh, so don't be afraid of data. I think it's been a game changer, I really do. I think that school principals take a lot ownership, a lot more ownership of where they're at, knowing that um, it's spelled out for them in black and white and then forcing them to talk about it without question. We didn't start with this complex protocol. Eight years ago, we started with just a plain old Word document, a green line, here's a question, list out your answers in yellow. Here's a question. So, of course, you know, people, it's very difficult to be where we're at now, but jump on. We're happy to show you all the different iterations, the different areas, the different protocols we've had. Um, to allow other people to have tremendous successes looking at every student because everyone in Florida has the same objective. That's to be sure our kids graduate with a high school diploma and their college career and life ready.